Hey guys, this is uh, very exciting. Today's episode is actually sponsored by Gran Turismo 7. Rated E for everyone. Which is out now for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. The game is obviously the latest installment in a franchise that many people consider to be the absolute pinnacle of automotive video games, myself included. And no surprise, it's been getting some pretty good reviews from the press and the fans. There's no surprise there. Dude, I'm not surprised at all. I'm like, hello. Oh, there you are. Yeah, the sky's blue. What else? Yeah, it's like, oh, what? There's a beautiful gradient on the sunset in Los Angeles. Sure, big surprise. <laughs> uh, so if you listen to our podcast, you may know that we talked about Gran Turismo extensively in a three-part series on racing games. We've also made an episode of Up to Speed on it. So let's talk about what makes Gran Turismo 7 so exciting. What are you guys excited about with this game? We have a, a couple PS5s at the office. Yeah, we got the rig set up. Some rig set up. We've been playing it. I was very stoked to play Gran Turismo 7. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I'll try it. I'll do a couple races. I uh, ended up playing for like two hours when I should have been doing other actual work. And I'll tell you right now, I'm at my apartment right now, and I'm very stoked to go back to the office so I can play more because the game is so addicting. It's like putting on an old sweater. Like if you've played Gran Turismo games in the past, it's just so easy to jump back in. And it's like, oh, here's that smooth jazz. Oh, here's the the world map where I got to go to. Like it's like an old sweater, but all, it's like your grandma took your old sweater and remastered that old sweater and it fits better than ever now. And it feels so good. Yeah, 4K ray tracing graphics. Yeah. And you're like, dang, Grandma, how'd you even know how to do that? Like, that's insane. She's like, don't ask questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're like, okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> but not only is it like, it, it's it's comforting like an old sweater, but like there's a lot of cool new stuff in there too. Well, you guys know I appreciate the finer things in life, right? No, this is first I've heard about it. Beautiful women, beautiful sunsets, uh, beautiful art i'm a huge art collector this game looks amazing this it looks better than real life like i keep walking around the corner i'm like is this real life no it's a <laughs> tv playing a game yeah i wish that real life looked like gran turismo yeah the game looks really amazing like this is easily the best looking racing game i've ever seen you just want to like crawl through the tv and and hop into that interior because you know the only way to play this game is in the interior view third person view get out of here and when you when you start a race you can uh, like an arcade race you can choose the time of day and the weather oh, that's pretty cool and there's like amazing weather effects and i was like oh i think i want to do it during the day it looks pretty good and then uh, every single one i clicked on i was like oh i think i want to do it at night when it's raining or <laughs> it just looked beautiful i did a race in my uh honda fit in the rain and it was pretty awesome how the the hand, how different the handling was. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is racing in the rain. I love that. Well, guys, one of the reasons that this game looks so freaking good is the use of ray tracing, which is one of the reasons the new Spider-Man game looks so sick. And Joe, why don't you tell the people at home what ray tracing is? Oh, thanks for the cue up, dude. Ray tracing is, it was kind of revolutionary in the 90s. It's basically a light simulator. So... Basically, for cars that have a ton of shiny surfaces, this means that the graphics are a massive leap forward. There's cloud and weather simulation based on massive amounts of real life meteor meteorological data. <laughs> meteorological data. Oh, that was really hard to say. There's even planets in the sky. How crazy is that? That is pretty insane. This is like extra icing on the cake. And that cake, Joe, is driving. And I just really love the driving in this game. Like, this is the first time I've got to play Gran Turismo with a steering wheel. And it feels so good. It's like... Yeah, there's an aerodynamic simulator to create accurate slip streams. So you can, like, legit draft. That's cool. Yeah, if this game was a cake, then it wouldn't be one of those fondant cakes that has like two inches of inedible sugar. This is like a nice, delicious cake that's carefully thought out. Nothing is out of place. Like this is a good, Gran Turismo 7 is a good cake. Like we said, we just uh, got the game at the office and we can't wait to get back there and start playing. I know that I will personally be investing many, many hours into Gran Turismo 7 in the months ahead. Uh, more than I should, I'm sure. So hats off to Sony Interactive Entertainment and Kazunori Yamauchi 
and Polyphony Digital for developing another classic car game. Uh, and thank you for their dedication to car history as well. It's much appreciated on this podcast. I don't know if you guys can tell, but we love car history. For all our listeners, let us know how you're liking Gran Turismo 7. And uh, we can't wait to hear what you love about the game as well. Smokey Nagata sat in jail 6,000 miles from home. He worried that his business was done for, that he'd never make it back to Tokyo, that he'd sacrificed everything he'd worked for decades to achieve. Also, his heavily modified, gold-painted Toyota Supra could hit 200 miles per hour on the UK public highway. What he didn't know was that by the time he returned home, he'd be a legend. How did Smokey Nagata become one of the world's top tuners? What's so secret about his legendary custom cars? And is the nickname Smokey as obvious as it seems? Today on Pass Gas, it's the story of Smokey Nagata, Top Secret Co., and the Doubleton Run. Pass Gas Podcast! It's about cars, it's not about ports! Chung chung. Dung dung. We're just doing the law and order sounds because he's he's in the British uh, criminal justice system at that point in the story. Yes, because we all know that SVU takes place in Britain on the M1. The U stands for UK. Yeah, Special Victims UK. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, that's Oi, messed up. <laughs> Oi, she was only eight years old. I believe there is a... There is a Law and Order UK, and they're all wearing wigs in the courtroom scenes. No. Yeah, I swear to God, that leaves a lot of room for like getting like big climax scenes where they get frustrated and they throw their and wig they down, throw their wig off. Yeah, I yeah. ain't talking to no Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome to Past Gas, everybody. It's a Friday morning. I'm feeling a little. A little sleepy. Man, me too, man. I shot so many <laughs> videos this week. Yeah, it's been a busy week here at Donut. I got a new email <laughs> I got to sign into. Yeah, we're dealing with a new email. That's rough. <laughs> yeah, this new email is uh, messing everyone up at the office. It is, man. Everyone's like, where do I change my background? It's Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, can I, can I download my uh, regular show? background with this new email can i still do that it's just been a long week i think for everybody we're gonna try to turn that around today yeah because we're gonna turn up guys let's turn up let's guys. turn up turn let's up. turn up let's make a pact right here we're right bring now the smoke. let's bring the smoke let's turn up call me tom brady because i'm saying let's go let's go let's go let's go those hurts commercials i how does he make it so lame? I get him literally every every ad break on YouTube on my TV. I get the Tom Brady "Let's Go" ads. Yeah. So now I'm just saying "Let's Go." You know, like I don't know what if this is me or if it's the kind of content that I watch, but I've been getting like opioid addiction ads oh a lot on YouTube. Well, you have been watching a lot of like fish tank videos, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 so maybe there's a correlation there. It's like the, the like, algorithm sees you like, man, this guy's just watching a lot of like chill videos. He, mu he must be yeah. on heroin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He must be just like hanging out right now. Yeah. Yeah. So he's maybe, just watching, yeah. He's watching videos of just like fish hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Fast Gas. I'm your host, Nolan Sykes, joined as always by my other hosts. You guys aren't co we're all hosts. Yeah, we're all hosts you know? here. Yeah. We're all yeah. hosts. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. I think that's this is a co-op. That's safe. It is a co-op. Uh, those voices you just heard, one of them was James Pumphrey. Uh, jet fuel does not melt steel beams. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Joe Weber. Uh, fish it out and cook it up. Wow, I love I love that one. That's great. It works for anything too, because you can fish a steak out of your fridge and cook it up. Or you could fish. Chicken out of a marinating bowl and still you cook can it up. Fish some sweet, sweet horse out of a spoon and cook it up. Unpopular opinion. I want to try horse meat. I was talking about heroin. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that horse was uh, slang for that. It's a, it's uh, yeah, neither it's, did I. It's an old one. 
Uh, you've been watching The Wire, huh? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, I read Basketball Diaries every night when, when I go to bed. <laughs> this week, we're talking about the legendary Smokey Nagata, a figure that has popped up in, in many a donut media show over the years, but we've never really dedicated a whole show to his legend. Legend. He is a legendary guy. There's not a lot of information out there on him, uh, which makes him even cooler in my opinion. He's one of these like old JDM dudes. You may have seen the uh, Golden Supras. Mm-hmm. You know, he ran uh, Top Secret. The classic video of him getting arrested on the, like the intro, you know? Mm-hmm. On the M1. They built the V12 Supra. Pretty sick. Whoa, That's wow. right. Um, It is kind of cool to be a sort of cult figure from the nineties because you do get some media coverage here and there. Like you show up in media that's still accessible today, but because but you social don't have media an wasn't Instagram around back then. Yeah. You don't have an Instagram. There's no like weird tweet from 1991 that he's trying <laughs> to cover up. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to get into this story. Yeah. This guy's a pretty fascinating fella and built some really cool cars. So without further ado, let's get into Smokey Nagata. These days, Smokey Nagata is part man, part legend, an old school street racer and legendary tuner, the founder of aftermarket's part manufacturer Top Secret, a straight up Yoda among JDM heads. Thanks to car magazines like JDM, Option, and Max Power, In the 90s, he became practically synonymous with underground racing in Japan. But mastering burnouts on the Tokyo Bay Aqualine was actually a long way from home for old Smokey. Kazuhiko Nagata was born in 1964 in rural Hokkaido, the largest and northernmost prefecture of Japan. His hometown was full of idyllic farmland and rolling hills, but that didn't do much for young Smokey. He later described his childhood home as a place with, quote, not much going on. (laughs) <laughs> I can relate. Yeah, me too. But importantly, his dad was a car nut who taught Smokey the basics of an engine. He didn't necessarily have the traditional personality of a speed demon. He was actually a soft-spoken, fidgety introvert. But he got familiar with driving by using the family truck to help out around their farm. Quote, I drove it every day and started to fall in love with the actual act of driving. The act of driving. He quickly found he had the intense, detail-oriented mind necessary to spend hours and hours tuning a vehicle for max performance. As a teenager, he bought his first vehicle, a motorcycle. He quickly decided two wheels weren't for him and added a go-kart to his collection. But since he (laughs) couldn't drive the go-kart on the farmland surrounding his family home, neighbors quickly got used to seeing him taking it to the streets. Taking it to the streets! We'll take it to the streets. That's beautiful. That was great. Is that Michael McDonald? Mm-hmm. Makes sense. <laughs> well, mystery solved. <laughs> <laughs> At 15, Smokey bought his first real car, a Mitsubishi Gallant GTO with over fenders. But unfortunately, despite his dad's mechanical know-how, Smokey and Smokey Sr. couldn't get the car running. So Smokey Jr. approached the head of a local Toyota branch to help him out. With Toyota's help, he managed to turn it into a respectable street racer. What? Imagine just going to like <laughs> the <laughs> Toyota factory and being like, can you guys help me out? <laughs> I'm 16. Can you guys make my car go? Can you help my Mitsubishi? <laughs> hey, you guys are Toyota, right? Can you help me with my Mitsubishi? Yeah. I didn't even put that together. Smokey then started driving the Mitsubishi to school, despite the fact that he didn't have a driver's license because the driving age in Japan is 16. When the conservative officials who ran his school found out, they expelled him. What? That's unfair. That's not even at school. That's whack, dude. Come on, man. How are you going to like be mad at a kid in a rural area for driving himself to school? He's going to school. Yeah, exactly. He's going out of his way to get transportation to school. I say we go over there and tell him what for. So then he went over to Toyota and asked for a job. And they said, <laughs> yep, you can just start today. You want to be the president? <laughs> well, 
<laughs> Joe, you joke, but this turned out to be a blessing in disguise. The head of Toyota, who helped Smokey work on the car, felt responsible for Smokey's plight. So at 16, no. Smokey was offered a job. <laughs> what? I, I did not read that, I swear to God. Uh, as He uh, got a job as a mechanic at Toyota. This is impossible to confirm, but he may have been the youngest Toyota engineer ever. Although mechanic is different than engineer. So dude, we did Tucker last week and now with Smokey Nagata, like, you know how long I suffered not doing anything without any opportunity? And then these guys are just quitting school and getting jobs. Yeah. No one calls me Smokey. <laughs> <laughs> Smokey spent four years at Toyota and was almost too good at the job. He eventually got fired for taking the skills he was learning at the factory and applying them to a secondhand Toyota Celica during work hours. Damn. I mean, he, if he's got extra time, why not? If you got time to lean, you got time to modify your Celica. <laughs> Smokey had been tuning up his car in secret, then taking it out at night to thrash the mountains of Hokkaido. When Toyota found out, they gave him the boot. Smokey was 20 years old and decided he'd gone as far as he could in rural Hokkaido. So he relocated 800 miles south to Tokyo with dreams of becoming a race car driver. Patiently crouched at the starting line, engines pumping and thumping with time. <laughs> I heard that on my, in, my, in the car this morning. You're at your house. Where, where did you drive? I got McDonald's. <laughs> well, oh, nice. I, was about to, I felt bad about myself because I was like, you've been in a car today already? <laughs> uh, I've been this week. I woke up at 730 every morning. I know. I know. Very. Uh, I'm a hero. But I regret to inform you guys that going to bed early and getting up early actually does wonders for my my mood. Mental health. <laughs> yeah. It's been pretty good. Yeah. You're on Chicago time still. That might have been part of it. I woke up early today and I realized, man, I've been up for a long time. <laughs> it's pretty cool though. When it hits like 11 and you're like, I've been up for four hours and I did, you know, like two or three things already. Yeah. That's like a good feeling. I like getting to the office earlier now. Yeah. Yeah. But in Tokyo, Smokey was flat broke and didn't know anybody. He practically begged for a job, any job at the tuning company, Trust Greddy. And as often happens when you ask for any job, he got the most thankless one, starting in the packaging department, boxing up trusts, aftermarket exhausts, and turbos. It was exhausting work, but well worth it. Exhausting. Get it? Yeah, because I said exhaust. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's called the radio magic, people. <laughs> <laughs> The real magic happened once Smokey was off the clock. It was then that the young fellow would head down to the racing department and offer a hand to whoever needed one. The trust mechanics were more than happy to get an extra set of mitts at no cost to them. At some point between learning about cars from his dad and learning about cars from the experts at Trust Greddy, Smokey started smoking. A lot. Hence the nickname. It's still one of his trademarks today. Good luck finding an article about smoking Nagata that doesn't mention the cigarette constantly hanging on his lips. And now that I've mentioned it, we've joined the legions of, of media <laughs> that mentions it. We could have broken the mold, guys. What, did his dad smoke too? Because uh, they mentioned Smokey Sr. I don't think he was smoked. That was just like a way to refer to his dad. Is that radio magic too or just straight up lies? <laughs> <laughs> It's an illusion. During his years at Trust, Smokey also met two important mentors, Masamitsu Hayakawa, who is the founder of Trust Greddy, and Isami Amamiya, who founded Ari Amamiya and was a pioneer in tuning rotary-powered Mazdas. Both were active in racing and top-speed competitions, which made them role models for Smokey, particularly when it came to work ethic. Do you think it'd be possible to make an engine that's a rotary that inside the Dorito, it has three pistons that are also <laughs> making power. Yeah, maybe that, that sounds very complex. Yeah. That's just how my mind works. You know, <laughs> I can visualize that easily. <laughs> Smokey worked his way up at trust, but the work wasn't satisfying quote. 
I was only allowed to make mufflers and work on turbos, but I wanted more. I wanted to tune for top speed. It was only natural that as he watched the experts at Trust, he would want to create custom design parts for his own cars. So, he did. After hours when nobody was in the shop, he began working on his projects until his bosses found out, just like at Toyota. This time, Smokey wanted to quit so he wouldn't get in trouble. But it turns out, Tokyo is not Hokkaido, and Smokey was no longer a know-nothing teenager. Masamitsu Hayakawa and other managers at Trust valued his work too much to let him leave, so they made a deal. Or, in Smokey's words, quote, The bosses found out and weren't happy, but turned a blind eye as they didn't want to lose me. So it was our secret, our top secret. <laughs> a year later, he founded his own company with that very name. In the early days of Top Secret, Smokey was flat broke, so he couldn't work on his own cars. He focused on finding contract work with other street racers. His first client drove a Toyota Soarer, which is a luxury GT coupe that shares a lot of parts with the Supra. Smokey managed to tune it up to a 12-second quarter mile, which was pretty dang good for the late 80s. That's not bad. Actually, not bad for the late 80s. Oh, no. No, no, no. Smokey and Top Secret quickly built a name in the Japanese underground racing community. And as the swing in 90s hit, that community found itself at the forefront of a global auto tuning boom. <laughs> JDM cars with massive performance potential were being released in Japan and shipped all over the world. You know the names Toyota Supra, Mazda RX 7, Daihatsu Shirad. And Top Secret was supplying underground racers in Japan, America, and elsewhere with the means to make their cars as fast as humanly possible. Surprisingly, though, Smokey's philosophy on car tuning wasn't focused on speed at all. Sure, he made fast cars, but he thought that high speeds were best achieved through safety. He viewed stock cars as unstable and unsafe to drive at high speeds. So it was his job as a tuner to make them safer. As he told an interviewer at Speed Hunters, the faster you go, the safer the car has to be. Make sense? Yeah. Top secret cars generally only come in two colors, white and gold. But the most famous ones are gold. He chose gold because as a kid, he always enjoyed watching the Olympics. <laughs> and gold is a representation of being the best in the world. His favorite movie is Gold Member, too. <laughs> And his favorite party of Willy Wonka is when Charlie opens the chocolate bar. Because he likes chocolate, <laughs> too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Good Chop for sponsoring this episode of Past Gas. Good Chop is America's online butcher. With Good Chop, you get a flexible monthly subscription plan for high-quality American meat and seafood. Choose a medium or large plan and enjoy your favorite cuts of beef, chicken, pork, and seafood. It's delivered flash frozen for freshness and sealed with dry ice inside an insulated box. I'm a huge fan of Good Chop. We got our box in the office. All the meat was there that we ordered. We got some delicious pork loin, pork chops. We got some delicious beef ribeyes in there. I got some scallops. It's all super high quality meat. Just the marbling in the beef. That's how you can tell it's a Good Chop. Good Chop offers convenient contact free delivery right to your doorstep. You don't even have to go to the store to get this stuff. And you can order Order fully customizable boxes. You can choose between beef, chicken, seafood, and pork products. 100% grass-fed steaks. Another thing that's great about Good Shop is they have a 100% money back guarantee, meaning if you are not satisfied at all with what they send you, send it back. You get all your money back. There's nothing to lose here. So go to goodchop.com slash gas100 and use the code gas100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. That's $100 off your first three boxes if you go to goodchop.com slash gas100 and use the code gas100 to let them know we sent you. Good Chop, America's online butcher. Are you interested in cryptocurrency, but you don't know what is going on with it? Maybe you feel a little bit overwhelmed. Coinbase makes learning to buy and sell cryptocurrency very simple. 
Coinbase offers a trusted and easy to use platform to buy, sell, and spend cryptocurrency. They support the most popular digital currencies on the market and make them accessible to everyone. Millions of people in over 100 countries trust Coinbase with their digital assets. I have Coinbase on my phone. I check it pretty regularly. You got my Bitcoin in there. I got Ethereum. I know that if I use Coinbase, all my cryptocurrency is safe. It's like a digital chain wallet. They make it so easy to sell your cryptocurrency if you're like getting bored with it, whatever, it's not making you a lot of money. Just sell it, buy something different. For a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at coinbase.com slash donut. Sign up at coinbase.com slash donut for $10 in free Bitcoin. This offer is for a limited time only, so be sure to sign up today. That's coinbase.com slash donut. Big thanks to Indeed for sponsoring this episode of Past Gash. If you're hiring people for your business like I do for Donut, I hire writers, you find out pretty quickly that it's hard to find quality candidates. So if you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. One of the things that I really like about Indeed is that everything is in one place. You don't have to have a bunch of different apps and websites doing different things for you. Indeed makes it easy to hire great talent. And according to Comscore, Indeed is the number one job site worldwide. Indeed has so many features. One of my favorites is Instant Match. Over 90% of employers get quality candidates as soon as they sponsor their job post, according to Indeed data. Candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search. So start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash passgas. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to indeed.com slash passgas to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash passgas. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. According to Smokey, Not just any top secret project vehicle is painted gold. Instead, the project must represent the epitome of the top secret tuning philosophy. Only our best and most accomplished projects receive the gold paint. The Tokyo racing scene evolved out of home tuners in the 70s and 80s who would generally compete at a track called the Tabi High Speed Oval. It was initially built by Japan Automobile Research Institute for testing, but became so frequently used by Tuners that Option Magazine began hosting speed trials there. Zero to 300 kilometer times were the primary currency among Japanese home tuners until 1997 when a new expressway opened under the Tokyo Bay, a 9.6 kilometer underwater tunnel called the Aqualine. It was long and straight, seemingly crafted by some kind of divine being to be the perfect for late night street racing. The Aqualine quickly became Smokey and the other street racers' new favorite test track. At one point, Smokey got his R33 Skyline GTR up to 204 miles per hour in the tunnel, which is often credited as the spark for an idea that put Smokey on the international map. And possibly some most wanted lists. Imagine how crazy it would sound going 204 miles per hour in that tunnel. (laughs) That'd be fun. (laughs) Jeez, man. And R33, too. Like, every once in a while, we get to drive some pretty fast cars. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, the cool thing of, like, cars today, no matter the make, they're just so stable and so solid at any speed. You rarely feel like you're out of control. But we're talking about cars that were built in the early 80s in this story. And, I mean, even back then, like, <laughs> just the guts it took to drive these these cars that fast. Well, R33 is 90s. Oh, yeah. My bad. I misread that as R31. Yeah, st- still a car from the 90s. Yeah. To go that fast. And a 90s Nissan is uh, just insane. In 1998, Max Power Magazine invited Smokey to England for one of its car shows. Smokey decided to bring along a video crew from Option Magazine since he figured he might get bored during the car show and wanted something else to focus on. 
During discussions with the crew, an idea came up. What if he tried to hit 200 miles per hour on British public roads? He'd already done it in Japan, and England definitely didn't have the same kind of car scene, so surely it would be an unofficial record. Smokey was in. He called it the double ton run. He chose a 1998 Supra for the base of his car, but tossed the original three liter straight six engine and replaced it with the engine from a Skyline GTR. So is that an RB, RB26 in that one? That would be. He liked the aerodynamics of the Supra, which were great for top speed, but needed more power. He thought the Supra was also a better looking car. Helpful since he wanted video of the run to get maximum attention as a sales tool for top secret. And of course, he trusted the Supra for safety. He later told Option Magazine, quote, The reason why I emphasize my tuning and modifications on the Supra is simple. This platform has a lot of meaning to me. It's the only platform that I trust with my life at high velocities. <laughs> They chose a rural stretch of the A1, a highway that runs nearly the entire length of England, from London to Edinburgh, Scotland. And around 4 a.m. on November 4th, 1998, in the freezing rain, Smokey set to work. He made several attempts to clear 200, but faced unforeseen complications every time, like rain. It's a big, <laughs> big old wet. It's a big old wet. That's what we call England out here. <laughs> I know you can talk a big old wet is coming. <laughs> <laughs> the wet roads made things difficult the engine was also running too lean to hit peak speed on one run the hood came up at 190 oh, on no. another jesus then all too soon Smokey's run came to an end when he saw police lights in the rear view mirror he had to know this might happen but Smokey still found himself in a pretty bad spot he was in a different country he didn't know the language he broke the speed limit by about a million miles per hour, and he didn't even hit his goal. But he didn't feel much guilt about it. He later told Top Gear, quote, I did what I did and what happened happened. I know it's morally wrong, but it is what it is. <laughs> also, did you see my hood go up at 190? That was pretty <laughs> sick. The cops threw him in jail, where he had to wait until a lawyer and translator could appear with him in court. Smokey worried about spending years in a British prison and top secret going under without him. But the punishment ended up being pretty light. He admitted to doing 120 miles per hour, was fined 155 pounds, and was banned from the UK for 10 years. You get out and you don't come back. You must have been going, what, 120? <laughs> and then he's just like winking. What are you <laughs> winking? <laughs> you get on that train and you take to the airport. And you go <laughs> back to wherever you're from and you don't come back for 10 years time. You're banished. <laughs> banished. When he got back to his hotel, he found paparazzi waiting for him. While Smokey was in jail, his late night escapade made headlines in British papers. The Daily Mail reported that it was the most excessive speeding violation in the history of England. Footage that Smokey captured with cameras duct taped to his car even went proto-viral as enthusiasts started sharing VHS tapes of some lunatic in a modified Supra going full beast mode on English roads. He's going beast mode in the big wet. I like a werewolf in London. He's going full Loch Ness. <laughs> This guy's all sixes and sevens, Oni. He's got the gravy. This is the kind of episode where people are like, you guys just did this so you could do a British accent the whole time. Big top gravy, thick chunky, got Yorkshire pudding. Oh, that's a real poor Yorkshire pudding, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> oh, that guy's a real pudding gravy. Oh, yeah, that's capsicum. That's capsicum. <laughs> what? Wait, it's it's what? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> it's capsicum. It's what we call fruit peppers, like a bell pepper. <laughs> we call it a capsicum. Called cilantro coriander. <laughs> Smokey didn't hit 200, but even topping out at 194, Smokey was an instant legend in the tuning community. He was also correct that video of the run became a highly successful PR tool for Top Secret proving that Smokey's cars were the real deal 
and helping to make Top Secret one of the most famous names in aftermarket tuning. He even sold the Supra to literal royalty. A prince of Dubai bought it soon after the run. In the years after the double-ton run, a slew of tuned Skylines, Supras, and later 350Zs, Porsches, and Nissan GTRs rolled out of Smokey's workshop. But he built his next star attraction with an even more ambitious goal in mind. 400 kilometers per hour. That's 249 miles per hour for those of you counting in America. He again decided to use a Supra as the foundation for his beautiful new baby, but this time he installed a massive 5-liter V12 from a Toyota Century, which is perhaps the fanciest car on the planet. He also strapped two turbo boosters on it. Oh what? my gosh. Built a, built a custom body kit in order to run the cooling system through the trunk. The result, 930 Hirschpers of golden goodness. This car is wild looking. I wonder what, what's the MPG on that thing? Uh, what's the MPG on that thing? More than you can afford, pal. <laughs> it's true now. Yeah. Aside from breaking the 400 mark, Smokey's other objective was to impress girls. <laughs> uh, aside from breaking the 400 kilometer mark, Smokey's other objective was to break Daijiro Anada's highway speed record of 346 kilometers per hour. Dejiro had previously broken Smokey's record of 340 kilometers an hour. We talked about Dai, Dai in uh, the Option magazine episode. Mm-hmm. He's the founder of Option. He was not allowed in Midnight Club, right? Neither was Smokey. Yeah. In 2007, the V12 Super won the Custom Car Grand Prix at the Tokyo Auto Salon. And after topping out at 358 kilometers per hour, at the Nardo Ring in Italy, Smokey took it onto his old stomping grounds, the Aqualine, and hit 370. It's around 229 miles per hour in English. Wow. Now, if you ask me, getting a car to damn near 230 miles per hour on the street is an incredible achievement and also behavior that I'm illegally not allowed to endorse. And... It may not have hit 400 kilometers per hour, but it did achieve something equally impressive. They turned it into a Hot Wheels car. Oh, man. So you can shove it up your butt. Whoa. Like Bam Margera. (laughs) Smokey's most recent build shows off his continued brand agnosticism. His latest golden masterpiece is a 650 horsepower 1994 Skyline GTR that's been stroked to 2.8 liters with a complete chassis refresh by Top Secret. Turbo by Greddy. Aftermarket parts scattered throughout, including HKS internals and some nice classic Tomai cams. Codenamed 650R for its many, many horsepowers. It won awards at the 2019 Tokyo Auto Salon before an American collector bought it stateside. That guy was Stradman. Yeah, Stradman owns it. To many... Beyond his famous exploits, Smokey is something of a mysterious figure. But Top Secret Co. is still an active influence on Japanese racing culture. The company races in the Japanese Super Taikyu Series, as well as D1GP uh, Professional Drift Series in Japan, the US, and UK. A custom S15 Silvia driven by Ryuji Miki won the D1GP Points title in 2004 in an epic battle with Team Orange's Nobu Shigi Kumakubo. Despite his man of mystery reputation, Smokey himself has now gone non VHS viral. He has 300,000 followers on Instagram, which is less than me, and various videos of his <laughs> <laughs> double ton run have millions of YouTube boots, again, less than us. He even has his own blog, which is more than we can say. We don't have one. Speak for yourself. You got a blog? I got a dog blog, right? No. It's called the the log. These days, Smokey runs top secret out of a massive workshop with a separate showroom, a distinct upgrade over after hours experimentation at a rural Toyota outpost. And his choice of a gold color scheme ended up being prophetic. Smokey's cars have won first place titles in drifting, drag racing, time attack, car shows, top speed runs, and even the annual Pikes Peak Hill Climb. 
Whoa, I didn't know that. Hmm. Yeah, he also won the Olympics <laughs> for diving. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. What form? Yep. Wow. Dang, I'm watching video of that right now. Mm-hmm. That's no splash. No splash. Zero splash. No flips, but no splash. Bloop. <laughs> bloop, bloop, bloop. Bloop. big thank you to our sponsor this week AutoZone your car should never get to the point where it's shaking vibrating or screeching when you brake AutoZone, America's number one brakes destination, wants to make sure that doesn't happen. AutoZone has pads, rotors, drums, shoes, brake fluid, and helpful advice to improve your stopping power. On AutoZone.com, you can specify the year, the make, the model, and the engine of your vehicle to make sure you're finding the right parts. Who hasn't done that before? From there, you will only be shown products that fit your specifications. It's so easy to find what you're looking for on AutoZone.com. I love heading over to AutoZone and getting everything I need. It's like a little ritual. And what's really cool, AutoZone carries aftermarket and performance brakes from trustworthy brands like AC Delco, Brembo, and Duralast. No matter what part you need, from pads and rotors to more specialized parts, AutoZone ensures you're paying the right price for the best in quality. Missing a tool? They have a free loan a tool program. Borrow the tools you need to get the job done. I love that. So find everything you need to keep your brakes in optimal condition. Head over to AutoZone today, in store or online at AutoZone.com. AutoZone, America's number one brakes destination. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Relationships take work. A lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well. But how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? You know, the only self-care I really practice is just getting exercise like twice a week. I definitely don't take the amount of time I should to uh, make sure I'm mentally healthy. But this month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself. Whether it's hitting the gym, making time for your haircut, or even trying therapy, you are your greatest asset. So invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for so many other people. You know, I think a lot of problems in society could be solved if people had a better connection with themselves. That's why I love BetterHelp, because therapy can help solve those problems. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Past Gas by Donut Media listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash pastgas. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash past gas. Thank you, BetterHelp. This podcast is sponsored by Peloton. You know, switching things up, trying something new is the best way to stay motivated and avoid burnout. Peloton is pushing you further with so much new on the Peloton Bike and Peloton Bike Plus. They've got new classes, new music, and new ways to keep your workout fun and motivating. I'm really excited about Peloton's boxing class. That's right, Peloton is stepping into the ring with its newest discipline, no gloves needed. Discover a fast, furious, and fun workout with Peloton instructors in your corner. Even if you've never boxed before, these classes will have you working up a sweat while working on the fundamentals of form, footwork, and fun combos that will keep you on your toes. I think boxing is a really great workout. Not only do you break a huge sweat, and get in great shape, but it also helps your confidence a lot. If boxing's not your thing, it's still easy with Peloton to stick to your goals when you keep your workouts interesting. Peloton has a workout for every day and every schedule. De-stress from a long day with 30 minutes of strength and 20 minutes of cardio. Or do a quick 15-minute total body class before work. Stay motivated while having fun with bike workouts, yoga, meditation, dance cardio, and more. I think it's super awesome that Peloton is offering a bunch of different exercises that aren't just on the bike. Peloton, they just keep adding stuff. Visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. That's O-N-E-P-E-L-O-T-O-N.com. OnePeloton.com. Thank you, Peloton, for sponsoring this episode. Hey, Past Gas listeners. Today's episode is sponsored by Gran Turismo 7, rated E for everyone, which is out now for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. The game is the latest installment in a franchise that many people consider the absolute pinnacle of automotive video games, myself included. And no surprise, it's been getting rave reviews from the press and fans alike. I've been playing it a lot at the office. It's awesome. 
Fans of the podcast may know that we've talked about Gran Turismo extensively in our three-part series on racing games. When the first Gran Turismo arrived on the scene, it combined realistic graphics with an incredibly powerful simulation engine to give players an on-track experience that was closer to real racing than anything before. Guys, I've been playing this game a lot, and so far it's been an incredible experience. From the Nissan Skylines to vintage Porsches to 60s Mustangs, there's a car in this game for every car nerd out there. And with the Gran Turismo team's impeccable attention to detail, you know they drive just like they do in real life. It's a lot of fun to turn the traction control off and just go wild. We've actually been playing Gran Turismo a ton and it's a blast. The game feels like a complete automotive world to get lost in, building on the amazing heritage of the series, but also feeling truly next gen with features like ray tracing, active weather simulation, and much more. So check out Gran Turismo 7 for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 and let us know if you're as excited about this game as we are. See you on track. The company now builds cars for almost every purpose, from the drag strip to the circuits and anything in between. Rumor has it Top Secret has even experimented with hybrid cars, building both a new Prius and Insight concurrently. Dude, I want to see that Insight. I kind of have a soft spot for Honda Insights. Oh, interesting. Learn something new every day. But if you ask Smokey, he'll tell you that his favorite cars are still street cars, and he's still chasing that magic 400 kilometer per hour goal. In 2020, he told Top Gear, I want to do 400 kilometers per hour in my R35 GTR. That's the goal. The more I'm suppressed, the more I'm motivated to do something. So I'm building my own. I will have the fastest car. For such a man of mystery, it's a pretty straightforward philosophy. Set a goal and then drive towards it as fast as possible. Hell yeah, dude. That's what we do. That's how we do. That's how we do, man. As I sit at my desk recording a podcast. Us and Smokey, basically the we're same person. Basically, Dude. like, we're like the Smokey Nagata of podcasting. Yeah. I'm trying to hit yeah. 400 megabytes per second on my Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Great story. What a guy. Definitely one of the all-time, like, all-time guys, you know, yeah. of, of the car world. What's, if you guys, if there was one, like, trait like smoking that would define you and you people would make a nickname out of it what would your nickname be masturbation in public (laughs) (laughs) pump pump and pump (laughs) (laughs) no how about you i was gonna say farty sykes but james got me beat (laughs) i think mine would be bad financial decision joe yeah yeah, that would be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got some mail this week. Uh, Francisco writes, hello again. I am Francisco from Argentina. Since you covered the history of Che in one of your podcasts, which, by the way, was awesome because you nailed it. It would be really cool for you to cover two of the most important automotive stories in our country. The 84 hours of Nürburgring it's be and 20. No, it's 84 hours. This is the story of the Torinos. That I keep saying, we got to do this story. Okay. Okay. Well, 84 hours and Fangio's life. In November, there's going to be a ceremony here in Fangio's hometown, and the timing would be perfect. I really like your YouTube channel and your podcast as a companion on my drives. If you ever need any assistance in Spanish-speaking matters or Argentinian history, do not hesitate in contacting me. I like Donut a lot and appreciate your work. Give it the beans, Francisco. Well, thank you, Francisco. I think those are two great topic ideas. Absolutely. We'll try to time that out for November. Thank you for emailing us. If you want to email us, hit us up at pastgas at donutmedia.com. And if you want to hit up Nolan at his personal email, it is Mrs. Harry Styles at gmail.com. <laughs> M-I-S-S-U-S. That is a real email, and he it will is. read it. Got in on the ground floor on that one. I can't believe I got it. All right, uh, follow my boys at James Pumphrey, at Joe G. Weber. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes, if you'd like. Big thank you to our producer this week, Thomas Ouellet, as always, and our writer, Greg Nix. Yeah. And thanks most of all to you for listening. Most of all, but mostly, mostly not you, mostly us. And (laughs) Greg more than you, and also Thomas more than you, uh, as individuals. But as a whole, thank you as a whole. Then we're all pretty equal. 
but you individual <laughs> viewer, we could take your leave. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, before uh, anything else gets said that we're going to regret, see you later.